Now we want to turn to a very important class of signals, which are complex exponential signals. And we're going to look at these in continuous time and discrete time separately. So we're going to look first at the continuous time version. So the learning objectives for this section are quite a few. We want to be able to write the general form of complex exponentials and use Euler's formula to express sinusoids in terms of complex exponentials, and then sketch special cases of real exponentials and exponentially modulated sinusoids and real sinusoids and then be able to calculate fundamental periods and frequencies for complex periodic exponentials and explain the similarities and differences between different complex exponentials. So that's a mouthful, but I think it's all very interrelated to, to all these topics are interrelated with each other. So what is a complex exponential? It's just a signal which is constant times e to the at. But the tricky part is that both c and a can be complex numbers. Um, and Basically, all the other signals we're going to see is a special case, you know, whether C is real or A is real or um, so on and so forth, we can, we can kind of come back and this is the generic form. Okay, so let's start with the simplest case. Suppose that uh, C and A are real numbers. That means that the signal is real. Everything is real. So these should be pretty familiar looking. If uh, we have an exponent that's bigger than zero, there's exponential increase, and if there's exponent is less than zero, there's an exponential decrease. So this is e to the one half t, and you know you can imagine other e to the three t and stuff like that is going to jump up even faster. So here's e to the minus minus a half t, so it's decaying to zero, and you can see it's decaying to zero exponentially fast, which is pretty fast. Um, in fact, faster than many things can grow, like linear functions. Uh, so you see, we uh, uh, these are these are should be familiar from calculus. But if we make a the thing in the exponent purely imaginary, then we have a another special case, right? So we have c times e to the j omega naught t. So now a is equal to j omega naught. And then if we write c in magnitude phase form we can see that uh, we can pull up the phase into the j term, so we get the magnitude of c, which is a real number, times e to the j, and then omega naught t plus the phase of c. So we can focus on the case where we, in fact, just look at real c, or in fact, c equals 1, because that'll be just easier to think about. Then we have a complex exponential, e to the j omega naught t. And this is a periodic function. It's a periodic with period 2 pi over omega naught, so that means after t0, which is 2 pi over omega naught, t naught seconds, uh, we're going to get uh, that the signal will repeat itself. And, and the way to think about this really is, is that this is a, uh, this is a, you know, phaser, which is kind of spinning around uh, in the complex plane. So this is the complex plane, this is the real axis, and this is the imaginary axis. Right, so this is, uh, this is a periodic function. So we're going to want to sort of understand more about this periodic function. And Euler's formula is going to be used a lot in this class. Um, and here's the form that we're going to use it in, basically, which is to say e to the j omega naught t is cosine omega naught t plus j sine omega naught t. So that's, that's pretty straightforward. And what this implies is that uh, regular sines and cosines are linear combinations of complex exponentials. So cosine, I can just uh, take e to the j omega naught t and minus, plus e to the minus j omega naught t, and the sine terms are going to cancel, and I'll just get 2 times the cosine term. So if I want 1 times the cosine term, I divide by 2. And similarly with sine, we're going to divide then by 2j. It's kind of useful to recognize that 1 over j uh, is just equal to minus j. And if you cross multiply by j, you can see that. Um, so you know, we should be, should be okay with having the j in the denominator. So I'm going to call this process of breaking cosines and sines into uh, complex exponentials as Eulerizing, or maybe in sort of, you can also think of it as Eulerizing to combine them back together to get a cosine. Um, and this is going to be very useful to gather like terms. Uh, it's actually kind of inconvenient to work with cosine and sine a lot of the times, and more convenient to work with these complex exponentials. You might not believe me now, but hopefully later you'll see that it is, in fact, easier. So just to get warmed up for yourself, you should try expressing cosine omega naught t times sine omega naught t by Eulerizing and, and cross-multiplying. 
and then see if the formula that you get makes sense in terms of uh, known formulas you have uh, for uh, double angle uh, double angle formulas. Yeah. So what if we have that phase shift? Because before we were taking c to be a constant, a uh, real constant. So what if we have the phase shift? So if I want to know what is a cosine omega naught t plus phi, we know that it's the real part of e to the j omega naught t plus phi. And if you kind of write it out, if you Eulerize this thing, you can see you get these two uh, complex coefficients times these two complex exponentials. So cosine is just the sum of two complex exponentials as before. The amplitudes of each term here are complex valued. So if you want to get the, say, imaginary part of, of this uh, e to the j omega naught t plus phi to get the sine component, um, you know, you'd get a similar looking expression um, as this a over 2 e to the j phi business uh, in equation 8. And it might be useful for you to try to write that down to make sure you understand what's going on here. If we have a complex exponential um, that's, say, e to the j omega naught t, and their favorite little example here, and it's got period t naught, which is 2 pi over omega naught, then what you can do is you can define what are called harmonically related complex exponentials. So those are just complex exponentials with frequencies that are multiples, integer multiples of omega naught. And you can think of this in terms of music. Um, it's basically saying uh, you double the frequency and you get an octave above the omega naught, and then if you double it again, you get an octave and a fifth, and so on. Now this is not a music class, so I'm not expecting everybody to um, to you know get the music references, but basically they're integer multiples of the of the fundamental frequency, and these are called harmonically related because this is what these are what are called the harmonics of uh, the signal. So if we want to look at the very general case of, uh, of complex exponentials, we can split this constant c into its magnitude and phase form um, and it, or its uh, Cartesian form. So we can take this, um, we're going to write the c in terms of magnitude phase and the a in terms of Cartesian. And then we plug in and we can see that we get a constant times e to the rt times e to the j omega naught t plus v. So we're putting all the complex stuff upstairs in the this exponent and all the real part outside multiplying it. So if we Eulerize this, we can see that it's this, we can, we just have to Eulerize this, this uh, complex exponential here and we get a cosine term and a sine term. And so we can see each of these are like, if I look at the, the real part, it's, uh, this cosine is, you know, a cosine wave and it's multiplied by e to the rt. If r is negative, we get this decaying exponential. So it should look like a cosine wave bouncing between kind of the uh, complex exponential and its, its reflection. So let's see a plot of what that looks like. All right, so here's e to the t. So here we have an increasing exponential and this cosine 3 pi t plus pi over 6. And you can see what happens is exactly this. You draw e to the t and you draw minus e to the t. And then you say, okay, the cosine is bouncing up between plus one and minus one, so it's it's hitting this uh, the upper and lower boundaries of these uh, exponentials as we uh, go along. And if you have a decaying exponential, you get a similar sort of behavior. Uh, here we have e to the minus t times this cosine, and so we plot e to the minus t and minus e to the minus t. That's these two uh, decaying dotted lines here, and our cosine bounces up and down between them. Um, hitting the boundary uh, every time the sine or the cosine is, is minus one or plus one until it decays out. And so what you can see is that these complex exponentials are actually very useful uh, when you look at their real parts and, and imaginary parts. You can see they're very useful at, at modeling uh, phenomena that uh, exhibit this kind of behavior. And, and hopefully you've seen this before in previous classes where you have like a, a uh, sort of sinus uh, wiggly part that is decaying exponentially in magnitude uh, as you go over um, as you go out into time. So it's like a it's like a, a bell that rings and then kind of fades out. Um, so this is the case for continuous complex exponential signals, and I guess the other case we have to look at is discrete, and we'll do that next.